Do you love guns? Hi, Gene Kelly here, and I've always been passionate about firearms. I started gunsmithing and went to gunsmithing school when I was just 18. I've been a professional gunsmith for over 40 years now, and I'm a licensed class two manufacturer. I've been teaching gunsmithing since 1993. Now we started the Gunsmithing Club of America 15 years ago to create a place where people who shared our passion, both professionals and hobbyists, could find reliable, trusted information on real world gunsmithing. We wanted to provide a place where our instructors could continuously teach our members, where both hobbyists and professional gunsmiths could share their experience and learn from each other. It's be a trusted community with reliable information. We knew that it would be an extremely powerful resource and tool to preserve our gunsmithing knowledge, provide our members with an enjoyable experience, and as a place that actually protects our firearms freedoms by keeping our guns functioning properly. As a member of the GCA, you'll have access to over 400 hours of gunsmithing instruction and techniques on video, all by qualified instructors who are masters in the field. You will receive our monthly Gun Tech video magazine and print magazine. Plus, the GCA members website contains almost 200 extremely detailed firearm disassembly and reassembly video courses, hundreds of product reviews, firearms evaluations, and industry interviews. The Gunsmithing Club of America is a one-of-a-kind organization. There's no other club or group specifically dedicated to the art, craft, and profession of gunsmithing. As a hobbyist or a professional, you'll find that this is your source for the knowledge you need. So feed your passion about guns and gunsmithing by being a member in the community of like-minded individuals. If it sounds like you, join us today. Welcome back to Over My Shoulder. And what we have here is a Savage 308 pistol. And <laughs> the repair tag says, make the trigger function and operate correctly. So show you that it is indeed empty. As we close the bolt, uh, we didn't cock. <laughs> I had it cocking kind of a little bit where it would catch and then snap off but it's not even doing that. It just, it just won't catch. So the trigger's releasing the sear. Either it's out of adjustment or it's worn or something. I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. So first thing I'm going to do is take the bolt out, turn this over and break loose the, the takedown screw. And the second tape down screw. All right. So let's get a better look. Let me get something to point with. Well, it's assembled wrong for one thing. You see this little leg right here on the trigger housing? That's supposed to be up inside there. So we're going to have to take this apart to get that in position. Uh, and I think that might be just exactly what's going on. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, when you pull the trigger, that, that whole assembly moves. And yeah, the whole assembly is not supposed to move like that. So let's... See what we got going on here. It's going to be the easiest way to do this. All right, let's try and take off that E clip. And we pull that pin totally out. And there's our sear. And we can do all the other all these adjustments once the trigger's assembled correctly and in the gun. We got you know sear engagement, over travel, safety operation. So there's our sear. And just so we don't lose it, I'm going to take out our spring. Now, dang it. 
These are no fun. Those of you who have taken these apart know that we've got a pin that goes through here. This is the thumb piece. So you, you pull the trigger, push this down, and the inside right in here is what prevents the bolt from coming out. So that's your bolt stop. You pull the trigger and push this down, that releases it. It's part of your, part of your sear mechanism. This large torsion spring pivots off of here. So it can be kind of a nightmare putting it back together. So generally speaking, I try to never take them out. Now we got this pin right here is our safety detent pin. That works on our, our safety spring, which is right here. All right. So I'm going to push this pin this direction because it has a head on this side. And what I want to do is get it to release from the receiver, but captivate that torsion spring on that far, far side. I don't want to knock the pin all the way out so this torsion spring comes out of there. Now I can move this back to where that guy fits up inside there. I want to be able to, oh, and it just fell out. All right, so that is not what we wanted to happen. So there's that torsion spring. And what I'm going to do is try and cheat. Come in from the back side with a punch. It's going to act kind of is a slave pin. Now it is a bit undersized. It's not the same diameter as the pin. And that allows some flex and some movement on a couple of these parts. One of those parts is going to be the safety. I need the safety to sit down closest to the receiver so I can slide the detent pin through the housing over the top of the safety. And Come on now. That should pop right through there. There's nothing holding it in place. So what is going on? There we go. Okay. So now, before I get to putting the pin through and the torsion spring and such, our tongue here is up underneath, or on top, where, uh, underneath the safety here, but into the receiver where it should be. Our punch is holding our housing bolt stop sear assembly in place. I'm going to start, I'm gonna go ahead and shove that punch the rest of the way through there if I can. Pull it back just a little. I know my fingers are in the way, guys. I do apologize, but sometimes you just gotta go with what you got. I was thinking backwards there, did you see that? I grabbed the punch instead of the pin. Okay, once you get it started, it should. It's starting to come through, so I can go ahead and 
Seat that down the rest of the way. Our tongue is here. Our safety detent pin is installed. Our safety detents. Yep, all three spots. One, two, three, got it. Okay, so this guy slides down here. And this guy. Fits through here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this E clip back on here. Okay. Now our spring. There we go. Okay, so we have travel now. We catch on the sear, we pull the trigger, it releases, excuse me. So when the bolt goes in, which I'll put in here in just a minute, bolt goes forward, we have take up here. We didn't have that take up before. As I pull the trigger, the trigger bar moves forward. It forces the sear down here. We pivot from here, so we move this direction, which allows our sear nose right here underneath this screw, which is caught in its full cock notch. So again, I'm going to use my fingers tension here, pull the trigger. The trigger pivots like that. This is allowed to fall that way, which is holding this piece, which is your cocking piece. Allows the gun to fire. Now we are out of adjustment right off the bat. I can tell you that already. I'm going to pull the trigger, push that in. Well, we're cocked. See that? So we got the gun functioning. It's back into one piece. It functions. Now we just have to make it function a little better or function completely correct. So uh, obviously we have our safety. We're going to want to pull this safety all the way back, pull our trigger and we fire. So, Hey, that's not quite what it's supposed to do. Now with the safety on in the, all the way to the rear position, you can't open the bolt, move forward to the safe, but can open the bolt position. We can recock the gun. So screw that in. And when we pull the trigger, the trigger bar, trigger bar here, moves forward and cans this down. And when I say down, I mean towards the bench, which is towards the receiver. So as you're holding the gun, it would be up. Just hang with me. Can, could you um, work forward? Because I'm filming your head. So this rear screw right here is the safety screw. Ah, there we go. So right there is that screw. The safety is all the way on. I've screwed that screw in until it comes into contact with the safety. Now when the trigger's pulled, the trigger hits our sear, it can't move. Everything stays safe. The problem with these is these stamped sheet metal pieces have a lot of flex and give to them. So what you end up with is the safety's on, we're adjusted, hey, we're happy and correct. Now I'm gonna take the safety off and now I'm gonna try and put it back on. A lot of times with that flex and whatnot, the sear flexes back down and now you can't put the safety on. There's a tolerance issue there. So first we do fire still, cock, pull that safety I could force it on. I'm going to loosen that screw just a little bit. Pull that trigger, get no movement of the sear. Good. So that's this screw, which we're going to seal with fingernail polish when we're done. 
This screw is your over travel screw. So as we pull the trigger, and I'm, this is going to be a little tricky. This, this whole one has been a little tricky with me trying to let Robert film me and not have everything in the way, my head, my hands, because I have to be able to see what I'm doing. And so that means I lean over. So I do apologize. It's just, it is what it is. It's one of the reasons I try to explain what's going on. So our trigger here, and we have a ton of over travel. If you watch that sear, see how it can move a long ways. So because I've paid attention to our accuracy expert, Daryl, I know that we want a little bit of over travel. So when the trigger breaks, as you continue to pull the trigger, because you will continue to pull the trigger, you don't want to move the gun. If you pull the trigger, it breaks. The striker falls, hits the cartridge. We detonate. You continue to pull that trigger. When it hits the stop, you move the gun. So I used to like just a little bit of over travel with a, with a little bit of take up there after the gun broke, after it fired, discharged, the drop the hammer, drop the sear, drop the striker. As soon as it did that, I wanted just a little bit of room for debris and whatever. And then I liked a trigger stop. And Daryl mentioned some things, and you know that that's actually not a good thing, and and it made sense. And so from then on, I've made a little bit of over travel. I want a little bit of room in there. So you pull the trigger, it drops the striker. You continue to pull, gives time for the bullet to exit the barrel before you come into into contact with the over travel stop. So if you happen to move the gun, it doesn't affect the accuracy. Daryl's our accuracy guy. So I've got a little bit of over travel there which I want a little bit. Now, feels a lot better. Well, it works for one thing. <laughs> Safety works, or should. Yeah, it, it's, it's a little stiff. It works, but it's a little stiff. Now, I'm probably going to lube that up a little bit, uh, just so things slide a little easier back and forth. Good. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to, I'm actually looking to see how much movement the sear makes before uh, the, well, this is a multiple sear system since we got the trigger bar. So this sear, I'm going to look at how far this sear moves before it releases this sear. Ain't a ton. So we're cocked. We stayed cocked. Yeah, it's staying cocked. It actually doesn't feel too bad. And it's staying cocked. So reach over here, wink at the close up camera. Get my tr trigger pull gauge, and we'll go from there. Customer didn't say any specific weight. Thank goodness. I'm not a fan of these Savage triggers. Try to work out front camera. So, all right, we are cocked. Thirteen five or thirteen five three three fifteen. Gosh, losing my thirteen five. Thirteen pounds, five ounces. Holy crap! So thirteen pounds, thirteen ounces. So we're under four. Well, that time said four. Um. He didn't ask for a specific amount. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I'm going to put it back in the gun. But it's, you know, when I'm slamming it, when I check these, bolt action rifles are easier for me because you can hold on to them. And I'm right-handed. So I'm used to doing this. 
This one's left-handed, so it's a little different. But what I'm doing is I'm slamming this forward as hard as I can and down rapidly. So slam, slam. So it gets the vibration and the gun jumps this way and then down. So usually they'll, if there's something wrong, you'll know it. It'll, it'll follow down. The other thing is on a rifle, a little longer barrel, you get more of a whip. I'll thump the end of the barrel and see that? And it held. So, all right, I'm going to seal this up and reassemble the gun and away we'll go. So that's a savage pistol trigger job. <laughs> Made the trigger work, and now a trigger job. Uh, we will see you next time. Do you love guns? Hi, Gene Kelly here, and I've always been passionate about firearms. I started gunsmithing and went to gunsmithing school when I was just 18. I've been a professional gunsmith for over 40 years now, and I'm a licensed class two manufacturer. I've been teaching gunsmithing since 1993. Now we started the Gunsmithing Club of America 15 years ago to create a place where people who shared our passion, both professionals and hobbyists, could find reliable, trusted information on real world gunsmithing. We wanted to provide a place where our instructors could continuously teach our members, where both hobbyists and professional gunsmiths could share their experience and learn from each other. It's be a trusted community with reliable information. We knew that it would be an extremely powerful resource and tool to preserve our gunsmithing knowledge, provide our members with an enjoyable experience, and as a place that actually protects our firearms freedoms by keeping our guns functioning properly. As a member of the GCA, you'll have access to over 400 hours of gunsmithing instruction and techniques on video, all by qualified instructors who are masters in the field. You will receive our monthly Gun Tech video magazine and print magazine. Plus, the GCA members website contains almost 200 extremely detailed firearm disassembly and reassembly video courses, hundreds of product reviews, firearms evaluations, and industry interviews. The Gunsmithing Club of America is a one-of-a-kind organization. There's no other club or group specifically dedicated to the art, craft, and profession of gunsmithing. As a hobbyist or a professional, you'll find that this is your source for the knowledge you need. So feed your passion about guns and gunsmithing by being a member in the community of like-minded individuals. If it sounds like you, join us today.